Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sammy. If you are new here, welcome. It's been a minute and I always say that, but this is actually going to be me being consistent. Hi, hello. So to be consistent, of course, we're going to start off with some negativity. So, <laughs> um, basically, I want to tell you about my experience about traveling internationally during COVID, which has actually been my worst travel experience ever. Um, you know, so we're just gonna get right into the tea. Here. Take that out. Basically, the goal for this trip was to go to Canada Me and my boyfriend because that's where my boyfriend's family lives And it was really important for the two of us to do this trip because he actually had not seen his dad For the entire time we were dating and we've been together for a year and a half And so this was a very important trip not only for him But for the two of us and it was like a good milestone in our relationship to be able to travel together to see his family for the first time So it was a really important and sentimental trip in my opinion Opinion. The trip itself, it was very nice to be able to meet all of them and I absolutely am very grateful to be able to do so. But we can talk about the actual travel experience. So I'm gonna get right into it. We currently live in Washington, so we were gonna fly out of Seattle. We wanted to try to take a direct flight from Seattle to Montreal where our destination was as far as like the airport. Our actual destination is nowhere near the airport and so we were trying to get everyone to fly in somewhat the same time so then that way people People could be picked up at the same time and there didn't have to be multiple trips to go get each individual we didn't really get control over the timing so we kind of based our flight off of that just so that way everyone could do that and I'm not like gonna say like it was bad or anything like that it's just like that's why we were put on those specific flights so we were taking a flight from Seattle to Montreal but we couldn't get a direct flight so we went from Seattle to Chicago to try to get from Chicago to Montreal so basically our flight from Seattle Seattle to Chicago ended up being an hour delayed. We had an hour and a half layover from Chicago to Montreal. So we leave an hour later, it's absolutely out of our control, and we're sitting in the airplane for an hour. Part of a Christmas gift that my boyfriend got me was first class. And I guess I should have stated this before, but the timeline for this trip was Christmas. That's also a factor for sure, traveling. That's something that should have been kept in mind, but it is what it is. It's okay. I'm back home, I'm safe, I'm healthy, except for the fact that my thumb is... I'll get there. I'll get there. <laughs> so we have a delayed flight. It really sucks. We were sitting in our first class seats, you know, hoping to have a good experience. And, you know, that just didn't happen. When we ended up getting to Chicago, we in fact did miss our flight to Montreal. And our flight actually ended up leaving early. If they had just waited 10 15 minutes we would have made it if we had left 10 15 minutes earlier we absolutely would have made it so me and my boyfriend were in chicago we missed our flight to montreal and if you don't know the covid guidelines and stuff you have to have a negative covid test and be vaccinated to enter canada from anywhere i don't know if they are taking international travel but you are able to travel from the US to Canada and of course going back home. So in order to get into Canada at the time when we were traveling, you had to have a COVID test that was negative within 72 hours of traveling. Now me and my boyfriend, we did not know all the details and we really should have done our research because then we probably would have we, we probably would have had a better time traveling. It, like I said, it just is what it is. You know, if we had done our due diligence and we had done the research, then we wouldn't have felt the need to blame workers at the airport for not knowing what's what. So we finally are able to find a representative who can help us with, you know, rescheduling our flight, get everything situated. But we had taken our COVID test on a Saturday and we were flying in on a Monday. And so 72 hours, we got our COVID test on Saturday. So we had Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. 
that was actually not the case, but that was the information we were leading with at the time. So our goal at this point was just to get into Canada before midnight on Monday to be able to go within the 72 hours. Otherwise, we would have to take another COVID test, which I'm not saying that that was an issue, but their COVID testing facility wasn't gonna open until 8 a.m. the following day. If we were to get a flight out the following day, it probably would have been at like 7 or 6 a.m. Also keep in mind, like we were trying to get into Montreal the same time as other family members also going into Canada like so obviously that wasn't happening so that definitely got messed up so then we are talking to this representative I would also like to preface I'm not gonna say any of the hotel names I'm not gonna say any of the airlines or anything like that just because yeah so as we're talking to this representative she I realized doesn't actually know a lot of the COVID international traveling laws, which is really unfortunate, just due to the fact that it was very pertinent for us to have that information and know that information. And yes, we will take fault that we did not do our due diligence and do the research that we felt we did need to do. So when our flight did get delayed and we actually ended up missing our flight, we were put on a flight for the following day. If you didn't know the 72 hour mark due to the fact that we didn't have a timestamp on our COVID test, for that Saturday, it would have been valid for Sunday, Monday, and then that Tuesday. So if we had gotten in before midnight on that Tuesday, we would have been perfectly golden. But we didn't learn that until we talked to a representative who actually works for an airline that literally has Canada in the name. I'm not gonna say any of the airlines or anything like that. Basically, the moral of the story is do your research as far as this part of the story, and I'm not even done yet. We finally end up getting a flight that night so we can go to Canada. And so while we were talking to the representative trying to figure it out, we needed a place to stay that night. And she could not figure out any hotels that we could stay in in Canada because obviously we were still in the US and it was easier for her to do it in the US rather than try to find a hotel in Canada for us to stay in and give us a hotel voucher. We weren't actually going to Montreal on this flight, we were going to Toronto, which is not Montreal. <laughs> um, and so we would need to take a third flight in order to get to our actual destination. Let me lay it out. We missed our flight, we're going to the wrong destination, but we're still going to Canada. Um, we're going within a time that we didn't actually need to go to because we could have waited until the following day. We did end up staying in a hotel, but we had to pay out of pocket for that hotel because when we actually landed in Canada at like 2 in the morning, they were like, oh no, sorry, everyone's gone home. We were very frustrated because... I understand that is not something that we can control, that people aren't there, but I think that one thing that really should have happened was communication to us a little bit more because it's absolutely not fair for anyone who is traveling who needs to talk to a representative, especially when their flight gets in really late and there's no one there that we can speak to. We spoke to a security guard at the Toronto Hotel. They told us that, yeah, the reason all the desks are empty is because everyone goes home when the last flight is scheduled. Our flight obviously got in, and if our flight was scheduled to get in at this time, why are there not representatives here? And she kind of shrugged her shoulders and she didn't really give us much else to go on, and that was extremely frustrating. I understand that it is around the holiday times, but I didn't really know what else to do. I'm not trying to bash on anyone who is in the customer service industry and doesn't speak English, whether you are international or not. Like, that's not at all my point. It was just that I felt very disrespected as not just a customer, but as a person, because what am I supposed to do in that situation? Am I supposed to sleep in the airport? I don't know. Regardless, that wasn't the end of the world, and that really was not the worst part of this whole situation. But at the time, it did feel very frustrating because I felt helpless. I felt like I had no control over what was happening to me. I had no control over where I was going. And I'm sure that there are so many people out there who are gonna say, well, you don't have to travel, you didn't have to go. And that's absolutely true. I did not have to go, I did not have to travel at all. But if you are going to be in any type of customer service industry or the hospitality industry either, you're dealing with people and it sucks because that's not even the worst of what happened on this entire trip. <sighs> I wish it was. Finally, in the morning, we barely slept. Our flight was at 6 a.m. I don't think my boyfriend slept because he was worried that we weren't gonna get up in time, so he just stayed up and he let me sleep for a few hours, which I'm very grateful for him. This whole trip was just so stressful and he kept me very level-headed, at least majority of the time. So we finally fly into Canada and then we don't see our bags. 
and were very confused. So we talked to a representative of the airline that we actually had switched over to for this flight because the airline that we were originally with did not have any other available flights to go to any part of Canada. So we switched to a different airline to actually get into Canada. We had to speak with this airline about trying to figure out where our bags were and what the situation was. They said, I'm sorry, like we have no information on your bags. We don't know where they are. We don't even know if they're on a flight. We have absolutely nothing. That was very frustrating because I have never been in a situation where I haven't had my bags and I haven't been in a situation where I wasn't sure what was going on. This was the first part of the trip where I came to terms with not having any control over anything and it really prepared me for the other half of the trip. So we didn't have bags for a couple days. I was able to wash the clothes that I had because um, my boyfriend's cousin was actually almost the same age as me and gave me sweats, t-shirts that I could like sleep in or just kind of spend the day in which was super nice. Otherwise it just really sucked that I didn't have anything and it, this was definitely a learning moment for me. <sighs> so they overbooked this flight from Seattle to Chicago duh like what flight isn't going to be overbooked at this point and they basically told us that if you aren't going to check your carry-on we unfortunately are not going to be able to leave so we were sitting right there and we were like okay fine like i don't care like just check the bag cool 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 yeah so we had no bags for a couple days finally got them and then what we ended up finding out was that the original airline had the bags and the flight that remember we were supposed to be on that was the flight that they were on and we were going back and forth calling both the airlines trying to figure out where the heck our bags were and both airlines were like i'm sorry but we have absolutely no information on these bags we have no idea where they are and like it you know like it's just it makes me want to scream because if you have record of these bags, you scan them, obviously, so where are they gonna go? Whatever. So, that's that half of the story. I've already been filming for 20 minutes and I haven't even gotten to the worst part, which was getting home. <sighs> so getting home, we also did not have a direct flight. <sighs> amazing super fun so it had nothing to do with the fact that we were traveling international or any of the COVID tests it literally wasn't that it was the fact that we were flying to Seattle <sighs> oh I love living here so we were taking a connecting flight from Montreal to Atlanta to Seattle so we go from Montreal to Atlanta absolutely no issue um, but when we arrived in Atlanta our flight for some reason delayed Twice. It went from getting home at like midnight to getting home at like 4 a.m. My dad was the one who was supposed to pick up me and my boyfriend, but the issue is I didn't really feel comfortable having my dad stay up that late because from where we live is an hour drive to Seattle and back. It was just not a good idea to have my dad pick me up, so we frantically started calling everyone we knew to try to get us picked up that night because if it was 2 a.m., we weren't going to get home until 3 or 4, but then the flight changed to 4, and so we were we were freaking. Start calling a whole bunch of my boyfriend's like military buddies and thankfully um, one immediately was like, yeah, no problem, I'll pick you up. It's not like I got other things to do anyway. So yeah, that was actually super nice and we appreciated having that. And then after two delays, the flight canceled. Before we found the gate to our flight, we noticed this very long line for the customer service desk, very long. So we actually ended up getting put in this line because our flight was canceled. So when your flight's canceled, you gotta talk to someone at customer service. So that was actually super amazing. So we ended up getting in that line. We're in that line for probably 20 minutes. And all of a sudden you hear everyone start talking about Seattle. You hear everyone start talking about flights being canceled, delayed, whatever is going on. Me and my boyfriend were just in line. I had to call my mom. I had to call my stepdad. I had to call my dad I had to call um, everyone that needed to know what was going on because my mom was actually visiting my grandparents with my stepdad in Virginia and I was supposed to pick them up the next day from the airport so if my flight was canceled I obviously needed to let them know what was going on so we're in Atlanta in this very long line and like I said we start hearing everyone start talking about Seattle and 
there is this big group behind us that they all just start talking to each other. I'm really glad that people were actually being a little bit more open about their situation and what was going on because everyone started talking to each other and we realized that probably half of the people in the line were trying to go to Seattle. We have this lady behind me. She had very long blonde hair. She was very sweet, very nice to me and my boyfriend. And we started talking a little bit and then I noticed that I started overhearing other conversations just further and further along um, in the line. And then finally, we have some individuals that just go up to the customer service desk and they're like, oh, are you trying to get a flight to Seattle? Okay. And they just laid everything out for them. Seattle had absolutely no staff at the airport. I don't know if it was due to the weather. I don't know if it was due to Omicron. I don't know if it was due to the fact that individuals who were not vaccinated were getting fired from their jobs. There's so many things that I have absolutely no idea what was going on. All I knew was that I wanted to go home. Finally, this girl comes back from the customer service desk. She tells everyone, yeah, there's absolutely no staff at Seattle right now. That's why they keep canceling flights and they're not even rescheduling them because they don't know where to put you. They have no way of getting you into Seattle airport. That's all that's happening. So me and my boyfriend are kind of like, uh, what? Like we're just lost. Like we don't even know what to do at this point. We literally had so many issues coming out of the United States and now we're having so many issues coming into the United States and we were just so baffled. At this point, like I said, this gal is just laying everything out for us. She's explaining to us like, yeah, if you're going on a flight to Seattle, go to carousel number. I don't even remember at this point. And that's where they're putting all the bags where basically everything is getting redirected. That's where all your questions are going to get redirected. And if you want to reschedule a flight, you have to talk to an individual downstairs. Everyone was like kind of unsure what to do. Do we listen to her or do we stay in this line? And then you know, she started talking with her family and then they started leaving. So we were like, okay, if they're gonna leave, you know, and they are trusting what they said at this point, literally you can watch like all of the line that knew about Seattle, we left. We went downstairs and we went to baggage claim. It was a horde of people. Like this was during, this is COVID. Like it was like being at a concert a foot apart from everyone. Everyone was packed into this one carousel. Everyone keeps asking everyone, oh, have you seen your bag? Have you seen your bag? I'm talking to everyone and I'm like, no, I haven't seen my bag at all. I have no idea where it is. My boyfriend, he brought his military sea bag. It's a Navy issued green bag. So it's very hard to miss. And we see a couple others like it, but some of them are army. Some of them are different. Like they have different styles. They look different. I blurt that out. And there was a gal who was there and she was like, oh yeah, I'm actually in the Navy too. And I'm getting deployed tomorrow and she needed to get back to Seattle. So I start talking to other people and I start trying to figure out like, you know, what is going on? And I kind of blurt out, they said we have to get our bags first before we can reschedule flight. And this guy overheard me and he was like, I've been waiting for my bag for two hours. So I would just go reschedule your flight now. And I was like, uh, what? Like I was just very, very confused because there's no way he was there for two hours and while we're kind of having this conversation trying to figure out what's going on this lady comes up to me and my boyfriend and she's like hey do you guys know what's going on like i'm just trying to get my bag and i was like well are you trying to get to seattle and she was like no like i live here like i'm just trying to get my bag and i was like oh so basically all the flights to seattle got canceled and they redirected all the bags to this one carousel and she was like oh she wasn't even mad she wasn't upset she was just like Oh, because she didn't realize that all these people that were here weren't even trying to go home in Atlanta. They were trying to get home to Seattle. She was just so baffled. She didn't even know what to say after. Anyway, me and my boyfriend, we kind of decide, you know, like you go get um, us checked in and I'll get the bags. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go get us checked in so we can get a flight to Seattle. Really glad that I did that because so many people probably saw me just doing my little jog. I was one of the first people to get in line. When I tell you there were so many people in line, an agent had to come over and be like, are you trying to get a flight to Seattle? You weren't even allowed to get into the line unless it was a flight in regards to Seattle. If you needed a customer service question, you had to go to a completely different part of the airport in order to get that question answered. And that sucked because there were people that were starting to come in for red eye flights. This is like midnight, 1 a.m. that all of this is happening. I finally am able to talk to representatives. My boyfriend comes with the bags and I was really glad 
because I wasn't trying to get yelled at for not having bags first before trying to reschedule my flight. If you didn't know, basically Seattle had the world record for cancellations, delays. Every airline was so overwhelmed and stressed with Seattle that no flights were going to be able to get in or out. We were trying to get home the 26th of December. This lady looked me in the eyes and said, we don't have any flights until December 31st. And I looked at her and I said, Absolutely not. No way. It, you don't have a flight for five days. Five days. You don't have a flight for five days. And I got a little upset. I'm not going to lie. It was very frustrating to hear that there was no flight into Seattle until December 31st. And I said that statement kind of loud. And I really shouldn't have because everyone that was behind me that was in this very, very long line, heard it. All of a sudden, you can just hear so many people just getting frustrated. Because I was one of the first people in line, I basically outed to everyone. Like, yeah, there's no flights out until December 31st. Like, you all should be very aware. You need to talk to your family. You need to talk to your job. You're gonna be stuck in Atlanta for the next five days. <sighs> I don't know anyone from Atlanta. I don't know anyone who's actually in Georgia. I vented a little bit on my social media about like what was happening, like on Snapchat, Instagram. Like I was frustrated because I get that things happen, but I really didn't know what to do. So I had an idea and I was like, okay, I have grandparents who are in DC. That's where my mom and my stepdad are at right now. My mom and my stepdad have a flight to Seattle. So if they can't get to Seattle tomorrow, then at least I'll be there with them. It was also a great opportunity for my boyfriend to meet my grandparents because he still hadn't met them either. I talked to this representative and I was like, honestly, I don't even care about Seattle. Can I get to DC? They said, unfortunately, no, we can't get you over to DC, like no matter what. And I was like, there's nothing you can do. And she was like, no, because it would change the itinerary of where you were trying to go and that was to Seattle and I'm like okay but that doesn't make any sense like I just can't get to DC it was like no you'd have to pay out of pocket to do that and I was like okay no I shouldn't have to pay out of pocket because if I'm not even going to Seattle why can't I go to DC <sighs> if we were in Atlanta for five days we have to pay out of pocket for food or any other amenities and I just wanted to get to DC because I know that my grandparents were gonna make sure that me and my boyfriend were taken care of we wouldn't have to pay for food we could all just have a good opportunity to be together and just not freak out and honestly I'm getting a little emotional because this trip was really hard I know so many people are probably gonna be like well you didn't have to go you didn't have to fly I understand that and that's why I've decided not to travel until COVID is over because I think that COVID definitely had a very large impact on what happened with Seattle but I can't even imagine I just can't even imagine anyone else experiencing this because I'm so thankful that I have the family that I have and that everyone is so supportive. But if someone who isn't as financially stable or whatever took this trip, they probably would not have been able to do it. <sighs> I'm talking to this um, representative and she is telling me that, you know, she can't get us a flight to DC and that we just have to get a flight to Seattle. So she gives us a hotel voucher for the night and I said, oh, do we not get a hotel voucher for five days? And she was like, nope, you have to come back every single day to get a voucher. But there were so many people that were stuck in Atlanta that needed to go to Seattle at this point. So hotels were gonna be filled up quickly. And I have a feeling it's why we got placed at this specific hotel. In order to get to the hotel, we had to take a shuttle. There were at least 100 people waiting for this specific shuttle. That's like not even a school bus where it, there's lots of seats available. It's like if you ever went to church, they had those buses that would help like the elderly or kids or whatever go to their parking spots. Like it was a bus that was very small. So you have 100 people that need to get to all these different hotels. 
So I tried talking to another individual who had just gotten off of a shuttle and I was like, hey, I'm not sure if you know of any other shuttles, um, but I'm trying to get to this hotel. He immediately cut me off and said, no, I am sorry, but I'm not who you're looking for. And it was just, it was hard. By the third person that basically said, just go away, um, is a very PG way of putting it. Um, I got very sad because I didn't know if the shuttle had just left and I didn't know who to talk to, I didn't know where to go and this entire time it was the exact same as the first part of the situation. I had no control over what was happening to me, I had no control of where I was going. I didn't get to pick this hotel, it was a place that partners with the airport and in all honesty if it partners with the airline, this airline, no. If you would not put your own people into this hotel, like. Whatever. We ended up getting a ride share over to the hotel, which we had to pay for out of pocket because we couldn't take a shuttle. So we finally go to the hotel. I'm not going to show you what my thumb looks like. I was shutting the door of the car that I was getting out of and I... If you don't like talking about blood or anything gory, um, just skip to this time over here. Um, because... Yeah, I slammed my thumb in the door and it immediately started bleeding and I didn't know what to do but my boyfriend was like go inside, go inside, go talk to someone, like go get some help. I immediately start going to the door and I'm just trickling blood like all the way to the door. I almost pass out because I'm very queasy and I can't handle the sight of blood. It was just so surreal. I had a lot of adrenaline going on so I didn't feel the full feeling of it quite yet and I get to the door. And I see these two little kids sitting on the couch inside. I can't go in. Like, I can't go in and nearly traumatize these children because my entire hand is just gushing blood. My boyfriend gets all the bags and um, he's curious and he asks me why I'm not going inside. And I'm like, well, there's kids and I, I just don't want to, you know, I just don't want to do that. So I was just standing outside and then my boyfriend finally gets all the bags over to me, um, like I said. And then he goes inside and he grabs paper towels or whatever he can find and brings it back out to me. He wraps my hand up and we're okay. And then I'm just sobbing at this point. Like, I start to feel it now. He's just like, no, 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 it's okay. Just put pressure on it, put pressure on it. And then he gets the voucher and gives it to the guy at the hotel. Let me tell you, red flag number one, this hotel that we were at doesn't have ice. I have never known a hotel to not have ice. I don't know if that's just because I've stayed in a nicer hotel or whatever it might be at this hotel. It was not a place that I would ever want anyone to stay at. We finally check in, we get upstairs, and we're going into our room, and we unlock the room, and we literally thought someone was in there. Like, there was garbage everywhere, and the TV was on, and we were like, what the heck? So we're standing outside, and the hotel guy, he comes up, and he finds me, and he's like, hey, I have this ice pack for you. Like, so don't get me wrong, like, that was very nice, but it was also like, okay. we finally end up getting the very last clean room. I would also like to point out the representative at the airport asked if we wanted one or two rooms. We got the last room and obviously the representative didn't know if, you know, me and my boyfriend, we wanted one room or two separate rooms. Like, so if we had gotten two rooms, one of us would not have had a place to stay. Get into the hotel room and I am just completely focused on my thumb. My boyfriend, however, starts looking around and it's disgusting. It literally looks like the only thing that happened in the room was the bed was made. There were, I'm not even gonna describe it. It was so gross, it was disgusting. And it immediately also smelled like cigarettes when we walked in and there are no smoking signs all over the whole hotel. So it's like how how, like how? So we were basically in the most beat up, run down hotel I had ever experienced. My boyfriend makes the decision that he's like, no, we're gonna go elsewhere. So we get a ride share to another hotel, which was actually a hotel that... We get to this hotel and their system isn't working. We are not allowed to check in because of the fact that they don't even have a hotel system up and running. They have nothing. We're confused. And this lady was like, there's actually a hotel five minutes down that way if you want to walk. So we grabbed all of our luggage and we start walking to this hotel. 
Also, this was like at 3 a.m. So we get to the hotel. It's a Marriott. And if you don't know, a Marriott is like one of the nicest hotels I've ever experienced or stayed at. And I was like, thank you. Thank you. Like, I needed that. I needed that. But we don't have a voucher for this hotel. We don't have a voucher for this hotel for the next five days. At this hotel, we check in and we meet Jerry. Love Jerry, okay? We explain to Jerry everything that's going on and Jerry's like, oh, do you guys have a rewards member or whatever? Oh, I know my mom does because if you didn't know, my mom actually used to travel a lot for work and she always stayed in a Marriott. I gave the guy the information and he was like, oh wow, you just saved like $60 a night. So I was like, amazing, because that's how much the other hotel probably cost. Me and my boyfriend, we finally get upstairs. We get ice for my thumb. This hotel actually had ice and we just decompress. I cried like so much throughout this trip and I stress cry too. Like if I'm super anxious and I'm not 100% sure what to do, I cry. And that's because I don't know what to do with my feelings. It doesn't necessarily mean that like I'm angry or I'm upset, but I cry. And it really sucks that I have to express my emotions that way because people just make it seem like I'm this damsel in distress and that's not it at all. So the only thing that I wanted to control was I wanted to stay in that hotel for five days and get a flight home. So we finally eventually get a flight to go home on the 31st, which was New Year's. And it was a connecting flight. The connecting flight to Seattle. I, like, I just don't have words at this point. It's the day we're supposed to leave. We're supposed to fly from Atlanta to Portland to then eventually go up to Seattle. I wake up in the morning to see our flight to Portland was canceled three times and rescheduled three times. Four, like four days later, by the way. You're telling me I had to stay in Atlanta for five days and then I get to fly to Portland for four more days. And then eventually go home? Absolutely not. I text my mom explaining everything that happened. My mom actually ended up making a flight from DC to Seattle. It was a direct flight, which makes sense why they weren't gonna cancel. It's DC, you know, it's a very prominent location, so it does make sense that they kept that flight a priority compared to a flight from Atlanta, and it's like, okay, fine, whatever. Don't make me a priority. It's okay, it's okay. I'm fine. I was not fine. I was. I was not. My mom got home. She got someone else to pick her up because, you know, I obviously couldn't. I was across the country. I explained everything that goes on and this is like at four in the morning for me, which meant that it was like 1 a.m. for her. And we were supposed to land in Portland at 11 for New Year's Eve. And my mom, she texted me back and I was surprised that she woke up, but I think she had her phone set up where it like woke her up in case anything happened um, for me, which makes sense because my mother, I'm the baby, like I'm her youngest. So she was like, my child, my child is, you know, hashtag youngest privilege, whatever it is. So anyway, I explained to my mom everything that happened and my mom was like, I'm gonna drive down to Portland and pick you up. I love this woman. I love this woman with my whole heart because I would not have been able to get home New Year's Eve. I would have spent my New Year's in Portland. So my mom basically left her house at like eight, maybe a little before then, so she could make it down to Portland by 11 a.m. by the time we landed. So. Lo and behold, we made it home, New Year's Eve. I spent my New Year's fast asleep. My boyfriend eventually woke me up at midnight so we could have a little kiss and then I Aww. went back to bed because I was so exhausted, both emotionally, physically. It was a very, very long couple of weeks. I wish I was able to go to DC. I wish so many things happened and honestly, I hate to say it, but sometimes I wish that I didn't go just so I didn't have to experience that because I am missing a thumbnail. And in the entirety of this, the only compensation I received was for the flight from Portland to Seattle that I didn't end up taking. So we got maybe a couple hundred bucks, probably spent a thousand dollars altogether for food, the hotel. I'm very grateful that I am financially stable. My parents were also, they helped out a little bit too. And that was very nice and I appreciated everything that they did. But if someone else was in my situation that doesn't necessarily have the finances, like for example, my boyfriend does not have the finances for that. It sucks. Um, my boyfriend works a government job and he is doing his best to rank up. I'm actually very excited. I have so much that I could talk to you guys about within like our relationship and his job and like all that stuff. But honestly, this video is gonna be so freaking long. I'm just gonna let you know that I understand sometimes you just shouldn't travel, but then I also understand that I was just, I, I was just trying to meet my boyfriend's family and I did. And then I just wanted to go home. 
and I eventually did. If you like this story time, let me know. If you have anything that happened similarly to you, or you were one of those that also got stuck in the whole Seattle epidemic, let me know too because I want to hear your experience because I was right there with you. It's actually so funny because my boyfriend's obviously he wasn't going to be able to make it to work when he was supposed to go to work. He was messaging his boss and he was like, yeah, so I can't come to work. And then his boss was like, oh, okay, well, I get that. Can you send me like a record of like what's happening? His boss like still was waiting for confirmation that his flight got canceled just so then that way he wasn't like lying. Like obviously he wasn't before their protocols and stuff. So he sent over the confirmation that it was canceled, delayed, we won't get a flight until you know whatever date next day my boyfriend he literally googled seattle cancellations and it was world record and then he also told his boss like, hey um you should just look up seattle cancellations and his boss was like oh like oh oh you're not coming to work in the next five days it was a very surreal situation to think that like if one thing happened, so many things are just disrupted. That's what our society is like. So yeah, anyway, this is me, loud and proud, being consistent. I'm gonna post on YouTube every single week on Fridays. <sighs> okay, I'm tired. I haven't thought about that in two months. February 17th that I'm filming this and talking about it and that's why maybe some things are kind of out of place and I'm sorry about that But okay, I love you. I'm stressed. Goodbye <laughs>